welcome to Games Chat. My name is Tony, and every week I scour the indie game website itch.io and pick 5 games to play. After playing through them, I'll tell you which games you'll enjoy and which you should avoid. This is Games Chat. Before I start, note that this game is in pre-alpha and is therefore very rough around the edges. With that being said, hyperspace hardness is a very interesting concept. Before playing the game, you should know that there is no options menu in the game. All the options are done with an external configs file. You're going to need to adjust your settings for your screen. For my 4K screen, I found that having the world cam set to about 3 and the UI set to 2 was ideal. The game does its best to explain most things, but something it doesn't explain is how to drop items, which is an essential part of the game, so I'll explain it here. All you have to do is simply click the item in your inventory, close your inventory, then place it where you want it to go with left click. It's fairly quick to do once you know what you're doing. Anyway, on to the gameplay. The best way to describe the game is a, a mixture between Stardew Valley and a, with a combat system kind of like Hyper Light Drifter. I really enjoyed the combat aspects of the game, as the game adds slow motion to your rolls when, when you dodge a lot of damage, which feels really good. And generally, I just I feel like the combat is the best part of it. It's just so much fun, and it's very fluid. It's very it's very difficult because you don't have a lot of health, and it's very easy to take damage. But I think that that difficulty is really a good strength of it. Overall, the general polish of what's here is really good. Rather than your standard left click to do everything, this game has little mini games for every activity that you do. For example, cutting out a tree leads to a really fun timing mini game that just is really satisfying and, and it really feels good to chop down a tree, which is something that you can't say about a lot of other games. The game also has a lot of charm to it. It has this little smell chart on the side that changes depending on your location, which is really cute. And everything is made out of code, and you're on the back of a space well, which is something I can't say I've heard from a lot of other games. On your first time around, though, the UI can be a pretty confusing to get used to, and the grating si sound effects that you can't change or lower the volume of can be a bit taxing for longer play sessions. But overall, if you're okay with playing an unfinished game that is a little bit rough around the edges, I would definitely say give this one a try. I really enjoyed it. This is Rip Them Off. Take capitalism and add a bit of puzzle elements and you've got this game. Honestly, the game is a lot of fun, but I feel like the concept is a bit lacking. Basically, you open multiple stores with different shapes, capacities, speeds, and money taking capabilities. These pedestrians come in and buy things from your store. There's about four different kinds that have different speeds and different amounts of money that increases each day that you go on, which incentivizes upgrades and keeping your stores up to date. My main worry is that I don't really know what else the game has for you. As far as I got, I didn't really see much of the game, but I don't really know what else they can do besides making the levels bigger. I don't feel like there's much more puzzle elements that they could add to this concept. I mean, don't get me wrong, I didn't really get far enough into the game to see if they were going to keep expanding on this idea, but as far as I can tell, I don't really know if they can add more to this concept and it's just going to be the same stores and the same pedestrians as in the beginning of the game. So I don't really know what else can go from here. But besides that, it's very fun and it's a good time waster. The game gets a bit frustrating if you fail on the final day because it, it can be hard to know what you did wrong and you go back and you try and salvage what you did but ultimately the whole idea was flawed in the first place and you made bad decisions on the first day but you're trying to fix it on the fifth day and it can be really frustrating to feel like you keep trying all of these different methods but in the end it was just you should have just started over. 
And I feel like if it if the game was a little bit better about that, like making you start again on the day on the first day rather than giving you that option, that might have been better. But I think that that's overall just kind of a minor thing. Most games have kind of a frustrating aspect to that. So if you're okay with spending ten dollars on a game, it's very refined for the price, and I would say that it's good. But if you're not really wanting to spend ten dollars on an all right game, then I would say skip this one. Endless Overdrive is the kind of game that is, well, endless. <laughs> the game is simple. You automatically move and shoot in the last press direction. You have these white blocks that move in a one direction that you can shoot and then they become static white blocks and then you have the, the red blocks that either spawn randomly or just you have the one from the beginning that follows you throughout the whole game. That's it. You just keep going until you die. This game is also very punk rock with the music and the art style. I wish there was just a little bit more to it though. Don't get me wrong, I could play this game for a while trying to get a higher score, but I feel like it would be more satisfying if the game had more effects for killing enemies. It feels a little bit lacking. It's very minimalist, to be fair. The game also has a bit of an identity crisis, if you ask me. It feels like it should be a rhythm game, but the rhythm is just ever so slightly off. The tempo of the music and the tempo of the game are slightly off, so it feels like you can't really get into a, a groove or a zone, like keep going and get a really high score. But anyway, the game does allow for a pretty deep gameplay. Because of the systems that it's set up, you kind of are left in this really hectic rush of trying to create a right path for you and deciding whether you should keep your 5 combo, which allows you to destroy the white bricks that you leave behind or get rid of it because the red uh, enemy is going to be coming faster for you every time that you keep that combo going. Overall, I would definitely recommend this game. Give it a try if you have a few minutes lying around and you want to play some kind of endless game that you could just keep playing over and over again. It's really fun. Werewolf is a simple platformer, focused around switching between two different characters that perform different abilities. The wolf form is the best for traversal and the human form is the safest and able to fit into tight spaces. The game has some interesting environmental storytelling, what with books falling open and revealing information or half-finished sentences scrawled in blood on the wall. The game is also short, I was able to finish it in about 30 minutes or so. I definitely feel like this game is pretty bare bones, there's not a lot to do in it. And uh, the, the systems that are there are, are pretty simple. It's mostly platforming and like a few stealthish sections. I definitely feel like the game needs more challenge. I really like the enemies that would hone in on you if you're a wolf and would avoid you if you were human. But I feel like they just don't do enough damage to really disincentivize the player just not being a wolf all the time except for the exact situations where the game forces you to be a human like the crawling sections i definitely wish there was more incentive to be a human like maybe if you had a torch puzzle where you could only be a human around fire because the wolf would is unable to handle fire or something like that i feel like that would really incentivize the player to be a, a human more than they are a wolf if that is what the game is going for, I'm not exactly sure, but I feel like you have no reason to really be a human because the wolf is just superior in every way. I also feel like when you die, the penalty is still pretty low. You spawn back pretty close to where you were and items don't move from where you last placed them. So you could die and place a box in a better position and then you'll be fine and you'll be able to go on to the next area. The platforming can also be a bit floaty as I feel like sometimes it can be hard to judge where you're going to land and it feels like you're not going to hit the right area and it can be a little bit hard to judge that but that can, can be standard over a lot of platforms. Maybe I'm just bad at platforms, who knows? 
but I think that the game needs more than just the platforming. I feel like if there was a combat system that incentivized being a werewolf at some point and incentivized being a human at some points, i.e. like the enemies maybe did more damage and, and made it so that being a werewolf isn't always at the best decision in the game because I feel like it mostly is so far. But for 30 minutes of your time and for being free, it's definitely not the worst way to spend your time. I personally wouldn't recommend it, but if you're a really big fan of platformers, you should go ahead and give this one a play. Another platformer, Black Resonance, is also only about 30 minutes long, but it does a lot more with that time. The platforming is responsive most of the time, though there are times where it can be a little bit hard to judge where your character is going to go because of the fact that you can hang on walls and stuff like that, and I've led to a couple of deaths because of that. The possession mechanic is also really interesting, and I feel like it would be really well used in a bigger game. But I think that this little prototype that they have here is very good and it shows off the concept very well. Overall, because it's free and because it doesn't take a lot of time, I would definitely recommend this one. Especially for a quick play. It's just a very good, concise game with a very interesting story. Thank you all for watching this episode of Game Stream. Stay safe out there.